Hi, I'm Heidi Joy Trethaway with the OpenStack Foundation, and today I get to speak with Dan Cohn from the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. We're talking about all sorts of uh, cloudy things today, <laughs> yeah. including Kubernetes. Absolutely. Well, I'm thrilled you, to, oh, please. Yeah, would you please tell us a little bit about um, yourself and the Cloud Native Computing Foundation? Sure, so the Cloud Native Computing Foundation is just a little more than 18 months old. Mm -hmm. We're part of the Linux Foundation, and we host a set of technologies that have been of a lot of interest to OpenStack members and, and users and are very complimentary in a lot of ways. Okay, and you know, we, we did our user survey recently where we talked to folks about what kinds of technology they're using, and we saw in the latest user survey, 47% of folks uh, indicating Kubernetes is kind of the number one container or pause tool that they're using. So well, that makes me very happy to hear. So we've um, been working hard with that community to raise awareness for it and try and help uh, with its growth, it's actually one of the very highest velocity projects in the history of open source. So when you look at the number of commits per uh, day that it's getting uh, over one per hour and over 1,300 authors that are contributing to, uh, from dozens and really now hundreds of different companies and the number of pull requests and issues, it's a kind of pretty amazing project. Has some downsides that it's also a little bursting at the seams of uh, all of these people who want to participate and take part, but it's really been a, a lot of fun to get to work with them. Yeah, it really is exciting to watch. And what we've seen over the last four user surveys, for example, is 75% or more folks are telling us that containers are the number one emerging technology that they're interested in. But I know that Kubernetes is not the only thing that the Cloud, Cloud Native Foundation does. Can you tell me a little more about that? Sure, so we're now hosting uh, nine different projects of which Kubernetes is by far the biggest and best known. Um, but we have a number of complementary projects to that that are used with both with Kubernetes and other container orchestrators. So in the um, monitoring and logging and tracing, which are all kind of complementary services, we have uh, Prometheus and FluentD and open tracing, and each of those projects is building up a good amount of momentum and excitement behind it. Uh, Prometheus was already uh, a really extremely popular project, and we think we've just been able to help that along. Um, we're also pleased now to have uh, two of the uh, best known container runtimes, Container D and Rocket, were just donated to us um, a month ago. And um, our newest uh, one along with those that's uh, maybe not as well known but quite exciting is called GRPC. And it's an alternative uh, remote procedure call platform for uh, when JSON REST doesn't give you the performance you need for an API or internally. And uh, you can swap in GRPC and it uh, is being used by Docker, by Kubernetes, by uh, a ton of other projects out there. Wow, that's fantastic. So one of the reasons that you came to this OpenStack Summit is because it's not just an OpenStack <laughs> Summit, but we're working with a lot of different open source communities. In fact, 11 different open source communities Great. having their own um, kind of mini conference within mm -hmm. this summit. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Kubernetes Day from yesterday. Yeah, so we were really pleased to be able to um, work with a lot of our, in fact, common members who are members of both OpenStack and CNCF and uh, sponsor this open stack, this uh, Kubernetes Day at OpenStack. And we got a good turnout for it and a lot of interest and just a ton of folks who are running them together. There's a little bit of uh, debate out there where some people are saying, oh, how can I run Kubernetes on top of OpenStack? And then there's uh, a whole set of other folks who are saying, oh, here's how you can run OpenStack as an application on top of Kubernetes. But we got um, a, a good set of discussions around that. Yeah, so I, I'm hearing so much about how containers might be running beneath all the mm -hmm. stacks or on top of the stacks. Yeah. Um, what, what, it, what is your vision for the future of, of what, what Kubernetes can do? Uh, we definitely see it in a lot of different places. So, I, I mean, I think the probably the most ex, um, exciting area and the folks I'm talking to are Kubernetes on bare metal and then using, uh, we have a package manager that's part of Kubernetes called Helm and it supports um, pretty much automatically deploying OpenStack uh, on top of that. So I think that's the, the area that's getting the most traction, but they're all open source projects. There's um, a lot of folks who are just trying out different things. We're very supportive of different collaboration, different experimentation. Yeah, and I, I think I understand you have a, another uh, event in the works to bring people together and keep working on that. Yeah, thanks for um, giving the opportunity. So it's Cloud Native Con, KubeCon, 
is our um, big annual summit and right. for North America, it'll be in uh, Austin on December 6th through 8th. And so for uh, people in the OpenStack community that want to learn more about Kubernetes, get to interact with a lot of the core developers and uh, folks in the community, we'd love to see them in Austin. Great, well thank you very much Dan Cohn for joining me. Oh thank you, I look forward to seeing you at another event.